Hey everyone, welcome to Can't Afford to Record, the YouTube channel where we figure out the art of audio production together. So, about two months ago, I got this ART Pro MPA2 preamp. And I picked this up because I really wanted a preamp that I could track two things at once with, so I wanted two inputs. And I like the fact that it's a tube preamp, so you can really get creative with coloring the sound if you want. And you can see my first video and my initial thoughts on this preamp around about here. Sometimes with hardware and especially plugins, the novelty can wear off. So I wanted to make a follow-up video about where I stood with this preamp a couple of months later. And to summarize, I still really, really like this thing. And I think the reason why I haven't got bored with this preamp is because it's so versatile. So the idea for the video this week was to write and record a little tune that only uses this preamp. So if I wanted more gain or saturation, I had to figure out how to get it with the controls that I have on the preamp, same with the tone, same with the volume, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the whole idea was what sounds can I get from only using this piece of hardware going into Logic. So a little bit of a 60s vibe, I think, coming out on this song. Everything you're hearing is going through the MPA, coming out the MPA into my Focusrite interface and then into Logic. There is not one plugin on this track, not one. And here it is. So in terms of the drums, I obviously didn't record these. I don't have the space to record drums. So this is coming from a loop pack, but the, the particular um, sample pack that I've got is a very Motown feel. They're real drums and they're just loops that I threw together. So that's what's going on there with the drums. Um, but let's start having a look at what I was doing with this preamp. So we're gonna start off with the bass first of all. And again, I just wanna sort of show you, there is no plugins apart from the stuff that I've got here from my template, but they're not turned on. So the bass sounds like this. Okay, so you'll see that I've actually got a couple of channels here, although it's only coming out from one of them. Uh, you'll see why I've got a couple of channels in just a minute. That's just the bass guitar going into the preamp with a little bit more gain than perhaps I would usually put on it, just to sort of give it that, you know, rough around the edges kind of feel. And I think I could get a little bit more creative with this if I wanted to split the tracks, split the frequencies, really pin down that low end foundation, and then maybe saturate the top end a little bit more, and probably make a much more pleasing bass guitar sound uh, rather than just dealing with what I have here. But that being said, for the track and for the vibe, I actually think it fits really, really well in the context of the whole song anyways. Um, so yeah, I was quite pleased with how that came out. Although solo, I'm not too sure if it's something I would have been like, oh my God, this is an amazing bass guitar sound. But still, uh, I think it works. And so, yeah. Okay, the guitars. I mean, obviously a really fun part was these guitar bits here. Um, I've got them a left and a right one. That left channel is just cranked all the way up on the gain, rolled back a little bit on the, um, on the output volume. And this is what that sounds like. I can put it in the middle as well, if you like. I mean, I feel like that is just such a 60s raw 
rock first electric guitar rock sound you know something like the kinks or the rolling stones is, is what it's reminding me of now again this is the tubes and the preamp and the preamp doing all the work here there is nothing else on this i think you could have some fun and put like an impulse response loader, uh, maybe something like a, a Celestian Gold or something like that, or a Celestian Alnico Blue or something. I think that could sound really, really cool. So you're sort of using the preamp as the amplifier and um, and then putting an impulse response speaker on the end of it. Otherwise, right now, it does kind of have that vibe that you get when you listen to a guitar amp without a speaker attached. But again, for the context of this song, I think it works and uh, it doesn't bother me too much. So I left it. There we go. And then the right side is pretty much a similar sort of thing. Maybe um, I'm trying to think, did I have slightly more gain or slightly less? I don't know. Let's have a listen. But um, this is sort of the guitar riff that's happening in it. And I will play it here. <laughs> I just love that for some reason. And then we kind of got that Motown double stop vibe here. Yeah, I really love how those guitars came out. Let's have a look at those chorus vocals first. I'm using this microphone, so the SM7B. This mic is low sensitivity, so it works best with someone with a loud voice. Luckily, I've got a pretty loud voice. So um, that's why I love this microphone so much. And I thought I want to use it on this track. I did have to really crank the gain. In fact, I think everything's turned all the way up. The gain's all the way up. Maybe the output level's all the way up. I can't really remember and we're going to get to that in a second about why I can't remember but more than anything else a lot of these tracks was just experimenting like pushing buttons does this work does it sound better with this one does it not sound better with this one and sort of making decisions as I was going and as I was laying down these tracks hey no I'll never stop hey reaching out for the top now it is saturating you can hear it's a little rounded on the edges but I wanted it a little bit more than that, but I couldn't get it really from just that one uh, mic take. So I did another one. And that now sounds like this if I put the two together. Hey, you know I'll never stop. Hey, reaching up for the top. There you go. Just a little bit more uh, thickness. And then um, I did a harmony on top. And now that sounds like this. Hey, you know I'll never stop. Hey, reaching up for the top. And I really think I got exactly what I had in my head. So I was so pleased with that. I love that. Now the real fun part. Um, yes, I'm using a telephone microphone. <laughs> Not a telefunkin, a telephone. And this is totally inspired by those who turn sort of cool objects like telephones and whatnot into microphones. I've got a great friend called Danny. He has an awesome... Uh, he's got an awesome thing called Weird and Wired, and he just basically does exactly what I just said. He will make microphones out of telephones or out of old tobacco tins or out of like salt and pepper shakers. It always inspires me. I'll link to Danny's stuff below in the description if you want to go and check out what he's up to. Uh, one day I went to uh, my thrift store and I found the microphone that I was using. It's over there somewhere now. I'll get it. This is my first attempt at making a telephone microphone. And uh, yeah, basically it, um, it works exactly what it is. If you wanna learn how to do this, I'm sure there's places on the internet that tell you. It's super fun, it doesn't cost very much. I think I paid about $4 for this. And you get that lo-fi oversaturated sound. So this was basically saturating or clipping from the get-go. That's why I thought it, it would sound so cool. So I put it straight into the MPA, cranked up the gain again, uh, just did whatever I could to really distort it. And that's what gave us uh, this sound. I'm trying not to get ripped apart, but when you're pushing me away, it's like a knife through my heart. I gotta try, gotta get back to you. It's really what I gotta do. Okay. That is so much more fun than going to a telephone voice preset on a plugin, I think. That was, yeah, it was just so cool. Again, like, I'm sort of getting amped again thinking about all this, but the idea, you know, of just like, I've got this intention in my head. I know what I want it to sound like, and I've got to use the controls on the preamp and maybe the right tools around me to get that sound. 
So just because I didn't track or show this mix with any plugins doesn't mean that um, it wouldn't benefit from plugins. So I decided to do a little mix with some plugins on the track. Perhaps I'll come back and revisit and show you what I did sometime in the future, but not to make this video too long. I'm just gonna play you the track again with some of my favorite plugins to elevate that 60s raw sound a little bit more and uh, hopefully make it better. I did mean to take photos as I was tracking so I could show you the settings that I used. However, I got on a roll and I completely forgot. And then I thought at the end, well, I could just um, do it all again, but I just didn't want to. I thought the, the feeling and the idea of the song might change and I really liked what I captured. So um, basically, if you are gonna use hardware, which I recommend everyone doing. And something like this is such a great thing to start with. It's what I've started with. If you're gonna use hardware to track with, make sure you take photos and um, save your settings, write them down, store the photo somewhere so you can recall those settings if you ever need to. Um, and I just didn't do that with this track, so. <laughs> I think that about does it for me today. Hey, if you like this video, then you might consider leaving me a thumbs up. And if you like it more than that, then you might want to subscribe and join me right here on Can't Afford to Record. But until next time, I'll see you very soon. 